In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and review how to write a very simple program in Visual Basic for applications within Excel. So the problem that we have is a tank, and we don't want this tank to overflow. So I'm just going to draw a tank, okay? And as we fill up this tank, okay, so we have something coming in, a flow rate. And in this case, we're just going to say that the flow rate equals 15 meters cubed and that's going to be every minute okay so 15 meters cubed every minute and then our radius of our tank so let's give some dimensions of this the radius uh, we're just going to say that's going to equal five um, five meters now that's a, a fairly uh, large tank and and then 10 meters in height okay so about 30 a uh, little over 30 feet tall um, Okay, so we have uh, the, the tank um, and its dimensions, and now um, we want to be able to say after 120 minutes, okay, after two hours, T equals two hours or 120 minutes, um, you know, is this going to overflow? And if it does, then uh, we want to put, uh, if we predict that it's going to overflow, then we want to print out a warning message. But if not, then we'll print out a message that says that we are okay. Okay, so um, let's um, also just review our volume calculation. So our volume is going to be equal to pi r squared. Okay, so that's going to be the area of this cylindrical tank. And then times the height of the tank. Okay, so this is going to be the volume calculation. Okay, and then we have our flow rate. So we have um, the total volume that it's gonna fill up with liquid. So this is the volume um, of the tank. Okay, and then the volume of the liquid. Okay, so I'm gonna put tank, and then the liquid is gonna be our flow rate. Okay, so that's gonna be in meters cubed per minute. Um, times the time. Okay, so in this case, this is going to be 120 minutes. This is going to be your 15 meters cubed per minute. Okay, so that uh, helps us determine if this is the liquid volume is going to exceed the volume of the tank. In that case, uh, we say that it's going to overflow. So let's just go back to um, Excel now, and we'll just open up a new workbook. Now, one of the critical things that you need to do just when you open up this workbook, click Save As. I'm going to click uh, Browse here. And uh, actually, I, I uh, selected the OneDrive there. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. OK, now um, I want to save this as a macro-enabled workbook. This allows me to create a macro. I'm just going to leave it as the default name, Book 1. I could change that if I wanted to. Okay, so there it is, and it has a little exclamation mark on it, just to let people know that there is a program here, a, a macro, that is potentially um, written there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is just input some of, some of the data that I have uh, for this problem. And um, let's just uh, do a radius of our tank. I'm just going to label that R and then H for the height, uh, the flow rate, okay, and then also the time. All right, and then uh, we have minutes uh, for the time, meters uh, cubed per minute for the flow rate, and then the height is gonna be in meters, and the radius is also in meters. It's important that when you're dealing with units, that, you know, especially with these calculations that it's better to have all the units in the same uh, consistent um, with the same consistent values. Okay, so let's do volume of our tank. Okay, and then we'll do volume of the liquid. Okay, those are the two that we want to uh, be able to compare. So that's just going to be meters cubed for both of those for the volumes. Okay, and then um, if the one exceeds the other, then we'll print out. A warning. So let's go ahead and just put in our radius value is 5. Our height is going to be 10. Our flow rate is 15. 
and then our time is 120. Now you could do this just with Excel, for example. So you could just e say this is equal to, and then pi, okay, times r, okay, so let's just select this, r squared times the height. Okay, looks like I need to do the parentheses on the pi. Okay, there it is. Um, you just have to do the open and close parentheses after you use pi. Okay, so there is our um, volume, 785 meters cubed. And then let's just do the volume of our liquid. Okay, and that's just going to be equal to the flow rate times the time. Okay, so you, there you can see that our volume of our liquid is going to exceed that of the tank. But now we're just going to write a program instead to do this and then also print out a message. So I just deleted those two. Uh, we already know what the answer is going to be, but I'm going to come over here to macros. Okay, and uh, let me go ahead and just select uh, view macros. Okay, and there's no um, macro here yet. Okay, so this is what, where we'll go to be able to create and, and modify a macro. Okay, and uh, or you can select um, that button there. Okay, so um, what I want to do is just record a macro. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to say that this one, I'm just going to call it tank. Now you could put a shortcut key there, like Control T if you wanted to, and I'm going to save it in this workbook. Okay, and then I can do things like um, do my calculation here equals, um, you know, the pi times r squared times h. Okay, and there, and if I come back up to macros and then click stop recording, then I'm going to have a new macro in my list. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and edit this. So instead of redoing that calculation, I'm going to edit this and let's just open up our macro um, program now. And so this is what I had done with that recording. It recorded it for me. I selected B5. I input a new formula and uh, then I selected something B6. Okay, so I could actually delete this. This one wasn't necessary. I'd only done these two things. What I want to do now is just write this program as if we um, didn't have this uh, recording here. I'm just going to start from something uh, new. Okay, now this is going to be our, our subroutine or the macro. I'm going to define R. What I'm going to do is just go get it from the worksheet, the active sheet. Okay, and then just select a uh, range. So this is how I select that first, uh, that B1 cell, and then dot uh, value. Okay, so, so that what that's gonna do is go, in this program, it's gonna go get the value of the B1 cell and put it into a new variable called R. Okay, let me just go ahead and minimize this a little bit just so we can see. Okay, so there is uh, B1 right here. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and do the same thing for our other variables that we want to bring into our program as well. Okay, so height equals, and then let's just do active sheet, and we'll just do the range uh, B2. Okay, and then our flow rate, and we'll just get all of these variables that we had to find. Okay, and uh, I'm going to do time as well. Okay, so active sheet just means whatever sheet is active, it's going to go get that, and then from the cell reference that I'm putting here, I'm just getting the value of that. Okay, and then let me just go ahead and define pi here. Um, 3.14159265. I'll just do those that many uh, significant figures there. Um, if you want to put in a new comment, you can just do the uh, the single quote here, okay? And then that will, should turn it, um, so I'm going to compute uh, the volume 
of the cylinder. Okay, and uh, then I can tab over if I want to. So I'm going to create a new variable v, and that's going to equal pi times r. Now, if I want to do squared, I've got to use this little uh, upward pointing caret um, squared times h. So I've computed the volume now. Okay. Now, oh, oh, there's an error here. Okay, so what is that error? Okay, it looks like I had to do a space between those two, or it thought that it was that it belonged to that variable. You see that? It said expected end of statement. Okay, so just do a space there in the caret after the variable name. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and just put another comment here. Uh, we're going to compute um, the volume of liquid. Okay, and so this is going to be my volume. Let me just put liquid there. Oh, if I come up, it, it yells at me. It says, don't have an invalid statement. Um, okay, so F times T. And then I'm going to come up and just change this value. And that's going to be the cylinder. Okay, now um, I want to put out a message. Okay, um, actually, let me just put out the, the values of those. Okay, um, so I'll display the values um, of the, uh, the volumes. Okay, and so let's just go active sheet. So before we were reading these values, now we want to write them to these cells. And I'm just gonna put the value and that equals volume um, v, B5 is going to be the volume of the cylinder or the tank, okay? Um, and I'll just name that tank just to make it consistent. Okay, that's our tank. And then we also have, let me just copy this line because it's very similar to the next one. And I'm just going to change this to B6 and that's going to be of our liquid. Okay, so I'm going to put those out. Now I want to do one final thing. Um, I'll display a warning. Okay, if uh, overfilled. Okay, so to do this we want to do an if statement. Um, so an if statement evaluates this expression and then does one thing or another based on whether that expression is true or not. Okay, so in this case, if the volume of the liquid is greater than the volume of the tank, then, okay, so this is our if statement, we're going to have a new message box that's going to come up. So this kind of prompts me what I should put in there, but I can put any message I want. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to put that in warning tank overflow. Okay, so the tank has overflowed. Um, else, we'll go ahead and put another message in here. Um, and uh, tank is not overflowing. Okay, and then we'll also do an end if. Okay, and then we just want to make sure you have that end sub there at the bottom. Okay, so let me just make this just a little bit bigger just so you can see uh, the whole thing here. Okay, so there is our subroutine and it's listed as this first module here within this um, as a macro in our workbook. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So you can have other programs as well that you have in here, other modules. Um, with that contain multiple subroutines. What I'm going to do is just run this now. Let's just see what happens. You select this little green button up here. If you need to stop it or pause it, you can do so here as well. So it says warning tank overflow. Okay, so it calculated those values for us again. Now if you come back in here, you'll see that those are just values. Those are not formulas like we had input before. Okay, so this is uh, just a very simple program. Uh, what we did is we defined some variables. We retrieved these values uh, from our worksheet. 
Okay, so that was the first thing we did. And then uh, we just defined two new variables, actually pi as well, um, the two values that we're trying to calculate. And then we put those values back into the worksheet. And then we had a simple if else statement to display a different message whether the tank is overflowing or not. Okay, so we'll also show the same example in MATLAB and Python. So select um, on the playlist, you'll see those as the next videos.